Welcome to Coffee with Closers. In this series, we interview top real estate producers that are out there making big things happen in the real estate industry. That way you can learn from their failures and their big wins so you can start winning more in your real estate business. to Coffee with Closers. Today we're here with a very special guest, Don Martone. We're gonna talk about some really interesting things that he's been doing. Uh, this guy has billboards all over the state where I'm at. He does some really unique things with personal marketing, personal branding, and then we're gonna dive into why he loves the word no. So Don, thanks for coming in today. I do appreciate you being on the show. I think you have a lot of value to give to new agents and seasoned agents. Okay. And how they can kind of spice up their marketing get new clients and also dive into the luxury market if that's what they want to do. Okay, perfect. Awesome. So, so Don, tell us a little bit more about how you actually got into real estate. What led you there? Uh, well, I mean, I was, it's probably a, a typical story. Uh, okay. There's nothing, there's nothing romantic about it. It, it, okay. kind of, it kind of, uh, you know, I was working in sales, uh, hardware store items, basic stuff, uh, you know, um, I was actually working for a company called True Value. Okay. Um, I was there for 10, about 10 years, and unless I married the guy's daughter, it's a family owned business, <laughs> unless I married the guy's daughter, that, that was pretty much it for the, the, the top of that, that, that food chain. Um, at the time, I was, I was actually living with a, a guy who it's a mutual friend, friend of ours, actually. We, we know him. Um, he might have been on your show. Mike, Mike Pereira? Not yet. He's I'm not sure he will yet. be, though. Well, he will be at some point. Yeah, so I, I was living with him at the time, and it was just a really attractive kind of lifestyle that he was leading. I wasn't sure quite what he was doing. I just knew that he had a nice car <laughs> and that he had this, 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 this time to himself where he, his day was is very different than mine. Okay. Because um, as you're getting into your mid-20s, um, you start to think about time and the, the, uh, how valuable it really is. Scarce. Uh, it is scarce and, and it, it, started to, it started to creep up on me. So, so that, that idea that I could control my space, I could control my day, um, was very attractive to me. So um, the transition happened. Uh, I was actually got into property management first. As I was now, this is this is kind of a message to your new agents. Yes. And maybe because I, I I've seen your channel by the way. Oh good good I'm glad I'm glad I love your channel. And what's the name? What's the current name of it? Empire of Real Estate. That's right. Empire it was of Real something Estate. a little varied before, right? It was, and we narrowed it down. Right. And yes. You, because you got to get specific, you got to get specialized. Yes, 100%. So, and I, I'm, I'm guessing that you want to build an empire. That's the goal. I've said real estate. Most people do. Most people right, do. Right, right. So, so uh, you know, get, you know, time, time, time. So, like, I was spending a lot of time thinking, thinking, too much thought, analysis, paralysis. That's you get this worst. thing go right up your ass that's just <laughs> like, you can't get rid of it. It's just like this thing that paralyzes you, you know? And um, it was in that, that era, uh, my mid-20s, about 10 years ago, <laughs> where I took action. I took action and I quit that job. Good. But then my life kind of spiraled out of control and I had to pick up other jobs. So this, my, my story was, you know, I'm sure it's pretty common, but I, I'm, I'm no stranger to uh, survival tactics. Like I, I, and I have no problem um, getting up at four o'clock in the morning. I, I'm, I'm assuming some of your viewers also have that kind of, that kind of hustle mindset. That's huge. Yeah, um, that is huge. I, I was never lazy in my life um, 
So that's the, I mean, that's the start of the real estate idea was seeing how others, I think it was the lifestyle of, of, of it that, that really attracted to me. And you can have a really great lifestyle. I mean, right now you're, you're driving around an Audi A7, going on boats in the nighttime, you go on cruise. I mean, you can really live an awesome lifestyle, but it takes time. Yeah. So before we jump yeah. into that lifestyle piece, what you know was the very beginning of your career like? What did that look like? Oh, I mean, like the first year. Uh, I got my license in May, and uh, it was it was month after month after month of trying to figure out what my groove was. And I think that year I only really closed two transactions. You know, so that, and in that six month, in, in that, you know, in the, okay, so May to, May to January. Yeah. It was like two transactions. It's First hard. deal I ever did also was the double end. I imagine that. Like, That's crazy. The, they're so odd. Aren't they rare in our they're careers? They're very rare. Yeah, especially now with buyer agency. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. And this guy he walked, open house. It was like, it was like the worst and the best sale I've ever had because it was, <laughs> it was like first open house, my first listing. Uh, it was a referral. I was actually that was that was his what happened. So that's kind of this is kind of an interesting story. Working at the restaurant four nights a week, making decent money. Every single table, every single table, every single person, the line cook, front of the house, back of the house, the guy that fucking uh you know, scrubs the dishes. Everybody knew or somehow, way, shape, or form had my business card in their backpack, in their pocket. Um, but, so through that, that was my first listing. Now, should I give away secrets on this? Absolutely. Most of the people that watch this, they're not even in our market. So, they're throughout the whole No, 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 I, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not worried about that. I'm not, see, here's the thing. Don't worry about the competition. Create, create. Don't compete. That was a big thing that I, I figured out early on. It's like, forget Chris. <laughs> forget what Chris is doing. Because if I'm chasing what Chris is doing, all of my energy is focused on somebody, something else. Something else. The bigger. <laughs> the, the, uh, Not productive. I'm, I'm giving you more energy. Exactly. Exactly. That's so. So, uh, you know, the restaurant thing. Everybody know one of the secrets I do. At the table, I would make not an effort to let people know about real estate, but I made sure that somehow it ended up going to that that direction. I'd say st they'd say stuff like uh, I I'd listen for cues in their conversations. Not only some a lot every pretty much every table. Again, be strategic about where your side hustle is. Is it going to be around a lot of people? Can those those tables would change over every every uh, hour or so. Every uh, every forty five. No, that's the you gotta turn the tables. Get them quick. Yep. More people, the better. Um, I'd say stuff like, um, well, they'd say stuff t to me. Uh, they'd say, uh, we don't see you in here too often. We never see you here. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm not here too. I'm only here Tuesdays and Thursdays. Really. What else do you do? I actually I, I sell real estate. Oh, you know my cousin. That that's the segue. It's not hey, <laughs> uh, you know it's not that. Yeah, you it's not that delivery. It's finding different ways to slip it in. Slip it in. Oh yeah, slip it in. Okay, all right. So <laughs> so how do you how do you stand out in a crowded market now? So. You, you successfully made the transition. Now you're full time, you're a broker associate, you have all this stuff going on, but right. how did you make that transition and actually stand out? Because in most markets, there are thousands of agents. Yeah, and, and right now we have what, 6,000? Six, 6, close to 6,000. 6,000 yeah. agents. Big deal, right? It yeah, doesn't yeah. matter. It doesn't even matter. Like, what? how do I stand out? Because you have. You've definitely yeah, stood out. Well, I mean, I most people know you in our market. Right. You know what I mean? To the point of you, you reached out and you asked me to do this, this, exactly. this, this high quality show here today. Yes, yeah. 100%. So, w the very nature of what you're doing right now with the big ring light and yes. the camera and, the, and the, hopefully this mic picks it up and hopefully you're recording. 
Yes, one hundred percent. I know I am. <laughs> right. No, he, this guy knows what he's doing. Um, with that being said, I I love the partner. I love to connect with the closing attorney. I love to talk to the title. Hey, guy, hey, you want to be in my video? Or I get invited to their videos. I yep yes. Um, you leverage your relationships, and I think the biggest thing is consistency. Yes. Be consistent yes. with your brand. Be consistent with your mission. Whether that's a mission statement, whether that's something you got on a on a blackboard somewhere. It's got your purpose on there, your goals. You know, you you have to stay committed to. And it doesn't have to be these big goals. It could just be something that, that you're focused on right now this week. You know, it doesn't have to be this insurmountable uh, big goal, you know. Okay, okay. So to you, how important is personal branding? Uh, how important? It's, it's everything. It's everything, okay. Everything, absolutely everything. Okay, so... From, so from start to finish... Going back to your 6,000 agent thing... Yes. How are you going to separate yourself? I mean, early on uh, was, you know, when I first got into real estate, obviously I was, I was uh, still a musician. Obviously the environment is different. You can't be playing out too much. But um, I didn't want that to go. A, a lot of people told me to cut my hair. A lot of people told me to wear a suit. A lot of people told me to... <laughs> Your uh, <laughs> what your your, <laughs> your your broker uh sat me down. He said, "Hey, look, you have you do it on the. It's okay to do it on the weekends. It's okay to have that mystery." And I I really thought about that, and and my feelings are kind of different towards it now, where I am a little bit more subdued, and I I don't put myself as uh outlandish out there with, with some of these these ridiculous videos I was doing at one time but um, you have to be true to yourself it's not a weekend thing like when I'm waiting tables at the restaurant I'm not working at the restaurant okay my mission is real estate my mission is awareness my mission is uh, expansion my mission is 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 that so it's always that and i just so happen to be waiting tables at a restaurant that makes sense okay okay so and i'm playing out at the show on the weekends but i still got my mission real estate awareness mission purpose yes. dreams desires i still got all that stuff the big stuff and i just so happen to be playing a show in front of that makes total sense. People. Okay. So so what unique things have you done to build your personal brand? Maybe talk about the billboards you put up, some some things like that. Because that's, you know, above and beyond and most right. agents never even invest the money. I know right. it's expensive. So Well let me ask you I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you something. That's a nice ring. Thank you, sir. It's a nice ring. Thank you. I was gonna wear mine, but um Say that one more time. <laughs> so, so what what things have you done outside of the box to build your personal brand? Okay, all right. I like this one. I like this question. Okay, thank okay. you. Thanks for uh, yeah. Thanks for that. Um, outside of the box, like I'm very, I'm very aware, even though I don't follow it. A lot of real estate agents I don't follow, meaning yeah. like their shit comes up in my feed. I, I, I try. I, I don't want to be affected by it. However, I do know. I know the Tom Ferries of the world. I know the Mike Ferries. I know the Brian Tracys. You know. I know the Grant Cardones. What's up, Grant? <laughs> Success is my duty. Um, I know all those guys, and they all are. They all got their own message, and I'm very aware of that message. So if you notice the trend now is in real estate, it's video. Yes. It is video. Okay, so in my mind, 
I know that everybody's got the video. Mm -hmm. So you're asking me how to stand out? Yes. Do still photography. Do roadway signs. Do balloons. Do events. Do mailers. Do, you know, do these things. Okay. Everybody avoids mailers. Yes. I do the mailers. Physical Hitt mail. hitting, hitting people on a different frequency than what they're... Yes, and I do do the video. We are doing a video right now. Yes. I get that. But I'm saying find different avenues that aren't necessarily... the Go to the road less traveled in okay. your market. In your market. Okay. It's different in every market. Obviously. That, that makes total sense. Now, now, just to give you some background, maybe I can put some photos up. Uh, Don has invested heavily in his personal marketing. He has billboards all over the place. I think at one point he even did something with uh, the local hockey, Providence Bruins, or yeah, yeah, in, in our area. Um, well, my company that I'm affiliated with, um, that I'm managing partner in this office, uh, fifty fifty owner, uh, Century Twenty. 21 Northeast is the official real estate company of the Boston Bruins. Okay. Nice. That, that is company-wide. However, um, when I was at my previous brokerage, to answer your question, I was doing stuff like um, event space in uh, the Civic Center that we have. It seats about 14,000 people. I'm probably making that number up. But it's about, so it's a big stadium. It's a, so it's a huge stadium. Yeah, it's a, maybe about yeah. 10,000 yeah. people. So uh, we, we do advertisements in the concourse. Um, they, they name a section of, for, like if you're in uh, section 110, it's Marteau Move section. That's yeah. awesome. So, That's so that awesome. kind of stuff where it's, it's that subtle things that people can't do or they can't afford or they can't, like I'll, I'll, I'll do whatever it takes to, because to, it's a benefit to me, it, it's, it's a write off. <laughs> um, but it's 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 only uh, if if I'm not investing in myself, who, who else is gonna? Your f girlfriend, true. your mother, yeah, true, true. Your yeah, parents, yeah. your your brothers, your You're sisters, right. they gonna invest in you? It's the best investment you can make. If you don't care enough to succeed in your business in your life, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> yeah, it's, true. it's not going to work true. out for you. It's not going to work out for you. How important is social media for agents? Like, how, how important is that? Well, that's one of the first things. When I'm hiring an agent, this might be a little tid tidbit for you. You're probably already doing it. No, I, I want to learn. Be before, you, before you meet with an agent, yes. Yeah, you look at their number. I got, I got all the stuff. I got a beautiful, beautiful recruitment software. It, it can tell every transaction you did since you were in the womb. <laughs> you know, and then your mother's transactions. You know, it, it tells all that, but the true story is how people behave on their highlight reel that they're showing you online. Now, what does their highlight reel say on Facebook when I'm recruiting agents or I'm looking at my co broke so I'm trying to understand if the tools, this is a psychological weapon. This is a weapon. Most people use it for negative stuff, negative shit, talking shit. Um, gossip. They, most people use it for that. Yeah. This is a weapon for me. This this is lethal stuff. Social media is very important. It, it tells a story about who your who your client's gonna be, whether it's a seller or a buyer, or who your agents working under you are gonna be. So I pay close attention to that, and I look I look at um, how they're behaving online. That makes sense. Okay. And the clients will do the same thing to you. You know, if you go to yeah, we've been. That's all the show. Know? Look at this is a show. Yes, one hundred percent. So that's huge. So um, to switch into that, so you kind of cracked the code to working with some really high end luxury clients. Uh, you know, how have you done that? What has been your biggest strategy? How have you broken into that market? You've taken some really high end listings and actually sold them when yeah. you know other Lots people have tricks, right? You got to actually you sell, them. sell them and make the commission. Right. So how did you even get the client client to begin with? Like, what's your strategy? Uh, what do luxury clients look for in an agent? Like, tell us some of those. I things. think I think track record is important. 
Okay. And where track record you lack, you can make up for in commitment, persistence, uh, and just general interest, gen genuine interest in their, their goals, what they're trying okay. to do. Now, whether that strategy means physically getting in their space and knocking on the door, or it means sending them, uh, you know, a, a holiday card, thanking them for the call that you just had a week ago, or, or you know, genuine interest and consistency. Once you break that, once you break that wall down in your in your, a lot of this shit is in your mind, by the way. Who the hell am I? My track record shows that the highest sale price I ever had was $257,000 on a single level ranch in Warwick. What business do I have selling a 9,000 square foot, $10,000 a month in taxes, three acre property, In a land that's foreign to me, for the most part. Yeah. What place do I have? What business do I have? Oh, wait. I know what I got, what the other guy doesn't. He's been doing it for 10 years. He's been doing it for 20 years. He's, he's sitting in his office. He popped it in an MLS. And he's doing this. And he's got calls coming in. Guess what? The seller sees that. The seller knows that. And when this guy or, or, or woman does not produce the results that they're looking for, and again, a lot of these big ticket listings, what is your ticket into that space? Expires or it withdraws, right? And then if they really got f***ed, they're going to go for sale by owner. So it's not, you're not trying to reinvent the wheel here. This is real estate. It's not complicated. It's not complicated stuff. It's, it's a people business. So to answer your question, you, you said plural. Yes, I've, I've sold over 800,000, 900,000, a million dollars. And, and the listings go on and we got $3 million listings now in Newport. And yes. Um, I was able to break that wall in my mind that um, I wasn't able to before, and that was just through just you gotta just you gotta dig deep, you gotta get uncomfortable, you gotta get heard, you gotta hear the no. Talking about no's, you gotta hear the no enough times to be done with no, to be fed up with no, to understand the mechanics of no. And the fact that you're the reason you're hearing the no is because you don't know. Okay. You don't know why the no is coming at you, and when you sh when you actually back up a second and you analyze what you're doing, and you and you like grind and figure out your market. Remember that how I just said I I didn't know the area. I never sold that before. Well, guess what you have over the other guy? You got commitment, you got persistence, you got your goal, you got your mission, and you're hungry. I was hungry. I was, I was starving for opportunity. And if I didn't find it, I wanted to create it. I didn't, I don't, I didn't, I didn't know anybody that owned a million dollar property. Who the hell do I know? I'm, I'm from a, I'm from a, a, a lower middle class uh, suburb on the outskirts of, of a city uh, parents never took me on vacation uh, had decent light you know I wasn't eating out of a trash can but like I that middle class mentality I think is the 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 the, the detriment and and the killer of it's it's worse than poverty because you you never hit the bottom you just you're on this little level, and I'm I'm tying this into your 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 yeah, yeah. Your, your luxury talk. Okay. Yes. It's not luxury to the guy that owns it, because that's just every you got to realize that 
it's not luxury to him. It's a, it's, a, it's, it's a problem to him. That's why he is asking you to get rid of it. That's a good point. So when you like understand that and you lose the pro poverty mentality and d daddy didn't love me, mommy loved me too much, sister doesn't like me, girlfriend leaves you, <laughs> whatever, whatever that shit is, that poverty scarcity mindset, it's a killer, right? It's a killer, but, 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 guess what happens? When you hit that bottom, that listing, those luxury things came out of ultimate hurt, pain, enough to drive me up and say, I'm done with this shit. I'm done with the scarcity mindset. I, I see what I want, I'm gonna go out there and get it. Now, you're gonna hear no. It's gonna come at you. Yes. But guess what? Then what, what's your next problem? That's the only luxury guy you know. Okay. Next. You gotta, you gotta, he's gonna know too that, look, I'm working hard right now. I'm gonna work hard for you. But you're not my only egg in the basket here. If you don't see my value, fine. It's a no today. No problem. No problem. I know. <laughs> you know, yeah. I know. Yeah. No problem. Chill out, back it up, don't hunt the guy down, don't, you know, you know there's, there's, there's all sorts, of, we could do a whole other hour on nuances and how to talk to people and... Yes. Am I, da am I touching on that? Yeah, topic? yeah, no, 100%. So, get rid of the scarcity mindset, know your value, persist, invest in yourself, you will surprise yourself, and guess what? You're gonna get the listing, by the way, despite all the odds. And then set the expectation to know that you're not gonna get a paycheck for the next 275 days. Cheers. <laughs> so, be realistic. Um, and when you add up that time, that's either telling you something about the market in general, or it's telling you more about the seller and maybe their motivation. So maybe, you know, not a lot, a lot of times people aren't that motivated to sell, right? Mm -hmm. I, was, I was curious and inquisitive enough to follow my instinct and simply make a connection. I didn't have the guy's phone number. I didn't pay for a service at that time because I was, I was selling real estate. I was doing okay. I was doing okay. I was doing deals. Um, but I was in nowhere positioned to spend thousands of dollars a month on advertising or, or buying leads or, or getting that service that gets their phone number or, or whatever those, those yeah. things are. So I did and I used the tools that I had available at the time. And it, it was only two of them. My left leg and my right leg. <laughs> <laughs> and then I used my hands. I coincidentally use my left hand and I use my right hand and I walked up the guy's driveway and I knocked on the guy's door and at the time I was very very interested it's more so because I was relatively newer in my career I think I was about two years in at the time that's pretty new yeah, haven't sold. Maybe I maybe I sold ten homes total. Not even. I don't even think I sold. Honestly, if it was two the first year, maybe it was four the next year. Whatever. Um, so I was very uh, I was very committed to the the rock star realtor branding. So when I showed up to this guy's door, <laughs> I had my hair down. I had a suit jacket on. I looked good. I had weird ass boots on. <laughs> I was completely myself, just saying, hey, he answered the door, who are you? I said, you don't know me, I don't know you, we don't know each other, right? Simple stuff. Um, hey, I noticed your house expired, went off the market, mm -hmm. and if you're at least 1% interested in having a further conversation, if you'd like to, to you know, potentially put it back on, I'd love to at least have a shot to, as I'm talking, as I'm talking boom, right in my face. <laughs> he opened the door back up, 
this gives you guys some hope too. He opened the door back up after he slammed the door in my face and said, hey, nice boots. And then shut the door. <laughs> Two weeks had gone by. The holidays were approaching. I did do some research into the gentleman's last name. And I discovered that he was not probably most likely of Christian faith. Okay. So I did not send a Christmas card. <laughs> <laughs> I, sent a holi I sent a Happy New Year card. A month after that, I get a phone call that changed my life. Now, I never met this guy outside of this door knocking thing. He's an old fashioned guy, older gentleman, very, very, very successful uh, in, in business and uh, actually to a global scale where he had multiple. Um, and to this day, he has recently passed away, and, and to this day, he, I, he knows, and we had a conversation, we had lunch uh, shortly after the, the, the closing, I believe it was, or towards whatever. And I, I just wanted him and his family to know that, that they, they changed my life. So, I mean, he, he knows that he, he, took a, he took a chance on a guy. So I got this phone call, and it was shitty weather, it was snowing, it was, well, I remember the phone call. He's... He called me up, hey, uh, uh, hey, it's Don. I said, yeah, it's, hello, who's this? It was a out-of-state number. Yeah, we're going to put it back on. I want you to do it. Send me the contracts. No listing presentation, no, just pure, hey, I think you need help. Hey, I think I can do it. All oh, right. I don't think, I know I can do it. Remove think from your vocabulary. Know that you can do it. Know that you, you, you're, you're, you can't fake it. You can't fake the no. Yeah. You can't fake the K-N-O-W because you got to know it inside you. And I, he, he felt it. People may hear your words but they feel your attitude. John C. Maxwell. They feel your attitude. So he felt what was coming at him was genuine, it was real. It was in a weird package, and the guy had long hair, and he looked like Fabio. <laughs> but I like him. And it took me 275 days to get a paycheck. 275, but you, yeah. you did it. You did but it. But how many, you, you, you were around during that time. So how, how, many, how many times were we at that property? How many highs and lows? Mm -hmm. Bunch of stories we, we don't have to get into, but it was just a really great, innocent time in my life that, that really was, I, I genuinely savored every moment. And then when you get that, that that reward for taking it, again, the rewards that you want are only gonna be in direct correlation to how hard and how much risks you're gonna take in this life. Are you gonna be shy, are you gonna be closed off? Are you gonna stand in there and talk to people like this? Or are you gonna be open? Are you gonna, <laughs> are you gonna be open and real with people? And, 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 emote, emit this kind of energy that's like hopefully contagious and, and not, ugh, Jesus Christ, we just got, you know, you, so, uh, so in what, what ways did that deal, I know you said change your life, which I can see why, but to explain to the audience, like how did it change your life, in which ways? Professionally, it changed my life. It changed my life professionally. I was I set a goal. I was able to do it. It was the the marketing to it was nothing like the ritzy ones that had it before. You know, they didn't, well, how how did he think he was going to sell it with a DJ and a, a spread and uh, that awful gaudy marketing and his shirt open and. And doing all these kinds of risque videos on the. I mean, I hired a models. 
I hired models to, to just be in the space. This was when, like, like, why not? The payout is so great. The payout is so great. The risk you have to take is that great. The seller feels that. They see it. It's almost like, yeah, I'm, I'm working with somebody who's actually going to get this thing done. They feel that energy. So I, I, I threw out all the stops. That's huge. Now, um, what's the what's payout on like something? What does that look like, just roughly, so they have a feel for it? I think it, I think it was $87,000. One one sale. That's huge. <laughs> one sale. That's huge. Yeah, yeah. And that, that's a that's a game changer. I mean, that's, that's that a, was a game changer. Huge that was, uh, that was a shot of cash flow when you're a business that right. you just can't get from selling a two hundred thousand dollar house. You have to sell a lot of two thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Probably about thirty of them. So yeah, you have to do that. Math, right. but yeah. And then I I caught that bug. Yes. I caught the bug. And you've been chasing like, the big stuff ever since. No, see, now he's, he's talking about chasing. We don't chase. You can't chase. Attracting. Attracting, yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. You Fair can't enough. chase them. <laughs> it will come to you. So, so next thing, one of the big, big topics that people talk about. What are your three, say, three pillars of generating business? How are you getting business? What's your, what's your traffic sources? How do you do this for someone that's just starting out or maybe someone that wants to add a lead source to what they're already doing? I think uh, if I could plug my own brokers. Go ahead. Plug them away. If that's how you're doing it all, man, plug them away. Well, I would say that you have to align yourself with the right leadership. Okay. And the right team behind you. I agree with that. Um, we are 40 offices in seven states now, including uh, New York, Florida, Maine, New Hampshire, Massachusetts, Rhode Island. Vermont, that's seven. Yeah. yeah. Well, I can't believe I got that right. <laughs> seven states, 40 plus offices. This is one we're located in Rhode Island. We got 850 agents, and we've sold $1.4 billion of real estate in 2019, and that was done in 3,330 transactions. I really said, to, don't quote me on that. Please do not fact check me on that, but it's, it's in the 3,000 range. Um, so that idea to me, you're asking me well, how are you generating business? Three we, ways, three ways. If three you ways. Have, yeah. yeah. Well, okay. Uh, every day, wake up, lose the fucking poverty mindset, lose the scarcity mindset. So what brokerage am I in? Okay. Seven states, 850 agents, 3,000 sales of $1.4 billion in real estate. The guy owns 40 offices, and now he's partnered with me on one of them. I want to know that guy. Yes. I want to know yeah. that guy. How am I going to scale my business? Am I going to chase sales all my f***ing life? No, no. That's not the end game for me personally. It can be for you. It can be for you. Do a nice team. Grow it to four or five, six, maybe ten agents before you say to cash out, sell the brand, open your own office, sell that office, sell the book of business. Whatever your plan is, that's not my plan. My plan is to learn my craft, learn my trade. And one of those reasons how I'm getting business is by being in a company that has that ability to generate and give me more business. So working with a brand that is the most recognized brand in real estate, Century 21. That gets me business. When I pick up the phone, I don't want somebody to go, who are you at? That's a, huh? You know, you don't, you, yeah, yeah. you don't want that. You want, because you got two seconds with that person. If they don't know where you're from, you don't know what you're doing. So that's one way, branding. Uh, your your uh, leverage the franchise leverage leverage that relationship that you have with your affiliate. Number two, keep it old fashioned. Why do I got to reinvent the wheel? For sale by owner, expires, withdrawns. That's number two. That's how I do it. That's how still I generate leads. I love connecting with people who don't know what the f they're doing. For sale by owner, 87% of them, 30 days, they will convert to an agent. That's the statistics are in your favor. Where are you trying to figure out what the f 
It's complicated about that. Just be the guy on top of the trash pile <laughs> at day 30. Be the guy the last phone call he gets. Be top of mind. It's yes. not it's not not anything complicated here, right? True. No, you're right. We hit you hit that run ahead. And then number three, I got a really good story. You talk about million dollar property. It's all bullshit. It's all bullshit. It's a house. It's it's a couple square feet. It's the same animal, it's the same goal, it's the same objective. The third way I generate business, you talked about social media. Mm -hmm. I want people to know that I'm still in the business. I want people to know I'm still relevant. The billboards are not for the customers. The billboards are for the Cobros. There's nobody calling off a road sign unless it's a horny, like, you know. <laughs> you know? It's, it's, it's not that. It's not for your bit. It's not for generating new business. It's for keeping your competition. Yet I'm creating shit. Keeping your competition, knowing oh shit, what? Because eighty-five percent of my deals are gonna be by way of Cobro. If, if I'm not light, fun, playful, easy to work with, and can can handle a, a, a relationship with the Cobro, who the f is gonna want to accept the offer from me? Right. So leveraging that, but the third way I generate business, and I'm t I tie that in, I'm tying that into the social media, is staying on top of your past clients. Uh, Don't forget, okay. just because you're off there doing sales, selling 20, 30 homes, 15 homes, you're, you're, you're over the, the, the loser mark of zero deals, <laughs> you know, you're over that mark, congratulations, <laughs> you made it past four deals this year. You're over that mark. You've defied all odds. Stay in touch with your past clients. Because guess what? I got a story for you. It's closing on Monday. Closing on Monday. I can pull up my, my commission bill I sent to that closing attorney. And he's, uh, he's in trouble right now because they screwed up the closing time. Again, you know your relationships. Know who the to deal with. Yep, yep. Because they could screw up your shit. You, you don't want it to. T you don't want that transaction to go so well. Beautiful. They call on you, Captain Crunch, and so uh, you were in the pocket. You were selling. Boom, boom, boom. And then you f the closing time on on a Monday at 9 a.m. The kids, the guys got a baby. They don't even know where they're closing. That's a problem. More on this later. But past client. This is. I'm tying it in. I'm tying it in. Third way I generate business: past clients. I sold them the house three years ago. Only three years ago. He knows the statistics. First time home buyer. That's the majority of your business. Yeah. This guy kills it as with first time home buyers. Today's buyers are what? Tomorrow's sellers. sellers yeah. right? Sold them the house three years ago. If we're talking, if dollar signs, I know it's Empire Real Estate, you get that lion that's very <laughs> reminiscent to a uh, Wolf of Wall Street, you know, Strat, Stratton and Oakmont, whatever the fuck it is. You know, very reminiscent. I love it, dude. I love it. I it's great. It. You gotta it. lean into your, your, you know, your shit. Lean into your, your, your. He's got the wave. <laughs> He's got the wave. Ride it. Ride it up. Why not? Sold in the house three years ago. $4,000 commission. Nothing to write home about. First time home buyer. No problem. The market. Boom. Strikes. Boom. It, it's like crazy. They have a baby. They got to upgrade. They, gotta, they need more space. They need more bedrooms. Fine. I get that call. I get the message on Facebook. Some people just communicate you with you. They got your phone number. They got your email. They got your carrier pigeon that you use, they got your address, they know where you hang out, all that shit, they still only speak to you on Facebook Messenger. Be there, be there with these people, be, communicate with them in the ways they want to be communicated with. Okay, that makes sense. Okay? That makes sense. Selling the house on Monday, hopefully. <laughs> I don't want to, okay, that's, yeah, so, uh, on one side, on the listing side, nine thousand dollars. I gotta have to pay the other co-broker. So we can talk more about that. 
That's that's great though. That's good. That's a big. That's, Not that's $9, a big. Yeah, that's and great. the house that they're buying. Nine thousand dollars side. Eighteen grand. Nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two thousand over the last three years with one couple. If you factor in the purchase, the sale, and the purchase, that's huge. And I think I'm even off on my number because I think it's twenty-four thousand. That's the complete because I think it was six. Six thousand the first time around. I think I'm making nine change on one side and then another nine ninety five on the other side. So it's going to be closer to like twenty three or twenty four thousand. One family, all because you genuinely f cared about their birthday. Hey, kids looking great. Hey. Hey, Don, uh, we're having trouble with our plumbing. Oh, I know a guy. You're, you're never really going away. The sale ends, but the relationship begins. Michael C. Lima. I like <laughs> the, that. The sale ends, but the relationship begins. Um, that is the three ways I generate business. Okay, that, I like that. That's that's good good advice for someone out there. Yeah, that's awesome. Now, now, why do you like the word know so much? What what's why are you so infatuated with the word know? It's that's not a normal thing, but you know maybe you can explain it and, and get people to uh, kind of understand the concept. Well, it's kind of like a masochistic like. Uh, <laughs> you know, like um, I like no. Uh, because no indicates I'm getting close to a, a hot point. I'm, I'm close to a sticking point. I've actually, no means that I've presented something to them of value that I see as value and that they don't right now. No means to me, I got out, I set out what I had to do, greet, qualify, demonstrate, propose, close, follow up. Six steps. Greet, Qualify, demonstrate, propose, close, follow up. I got to the close stage. Less than 2% of all sales occur within the first transaction. Who the f do you think you are? What do you think, you're Superman? You think you're Superman trying to close somebody right now? Do you think you're just because you decided to show up and they had an expired withdrawn listing that um, you were the sales god going to go in there and just nail it? Sometimes you do. Sometimes you do. Don't be obsessed with that outcome and know that the no means you did what you set out to do. Mm -hmm. That's why I like no. It means that I got somewhere with the conversation. They were able to reject me. I love that. Okay. I'm weary of yes. I'm weary of yes because if a yes comes at me, I'm like, whoa. What's, what's wrong with this guy? What's wrong with this dude? What's wrong with this, this woman trying to sell this house? It's too easy. It's, it's weird to me. Um, maybe it's because I'm, I'm, maybe I'm pessimist by nature or, or I'm, 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 I don't know, I kind of float between optimism and, and pessimism kind of thing. And I think you've you got to be on your edge. You've got to be sharp enough to know and, and okay, yeah, no. <laughs> like you gotta know why you get the no. And I've spent a long time over the last couple of the, ten years figuring out what no actually means. And I, I love no. I do love no. No is no is your your stepping stone to the yes. Okay. Okay. Now, just to how important is prospecting to somebody? Because you know, obviously. You're getting these no's most likely when you're prospecting. How important is that to somebody's business? Well, again, it ties back into your, your first, uh, one of your first questions was about luxury. Yes. Again, never would have happened. No, no way, shape, or form would have ever happened um, if I was not comfortable with no. Okay. Meaning... Prospecting and no are closely related. Prospecting is essential to grow the no. <laughs> Dude, you're getting one line this day. That's it's, pretty good. good. That's pretty good. Prospecting is 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 key to your business because it's going to generate. If you don't, ha yes, you can lean on referral. It depends on what kind of business. 
you're obviously dealing with entrepreneurs. Yes. You're dealing with, with um, young guys or girls who are sick of the nine to five and they want to know what they're doing wrong. They want to, they want some inspiration. They want some, some hope that, that something can happen. I'm telling you the, the payoff is there and every day, you, if you're going to get into this real estate game, because it is a game, it's a game, mm -hmm. it's all fun. This is fun. This, I, I feel, it, it I, fun. I, I have fun every day. Yes. Scary. It's fun. I feel like, I feel like, I don't know. It's almost like, I'm like, should I be doing something else where it's like hard, <laughs> you know, or should, should I be doing something more challenging? And that's why I'm transitioning my business into agent-driven stuff, office driven. I want to know how to hear, know when the guy, I want to buy the guy's office. <laughs> you know, I want to, hey, what's wrong with that, man? Come on, man. I'm giving you 25 grand, man. <laughs> like, like, I want to hear, what, I want to get to that level. That makes sense. Um, and the only way to do that is prospecting. Prospecting, okay. Now, now, some of your newer agents that you have at the office, what do you suggest to them? Uh, how long should they be prospecting per day? Uh, I, you know, what would you recommend if someone came in your office today, Don? How long should you be doing can, this? If you successful? can do it, do it. If you got time to do it, do it. That's it. I mean, it's not. It's yeah. You could do it. I, I, we got agents in there. Like uh, you know the guy. I think you're familiar with him. Um, he's in here from nine a.m. to eight p.m. Wow. He's obsessed. He is obsessed with no. That's huge. That's that's a long day of prospecting. That's, that's and intense. he's, but he walks out of here every day with five appointments. Wow. That's now huge. he's this is coming from a guy that didn't sell anything for two years, didn't sell a f***ing lick a, a postage stamp. He couldn't <laughs> sell a postage stamp. We teach him the, the tools. We give him the scripts. He's got an agent. He's got an agent driven office, which is myself. Um, even though I'm broker associate, I'm still very. I'm still active in the business, you know, more so than anybody else I know, you know, kind of, um, so they see that that's kind of contagious and you know, they don't want to let, I'm sitting right across, I'm sitting right over there and I critique them and when, it, when I see him doing well, I'm like, you know, keep going, dude, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. He's got some, and he's got some great, but he's now he's relaxed. He's he's by doing it every day. He hears the no. He hears all the objections. There's only five of them, by the way. It's only five. So know him. He's relaxed. He's easy. He can he can he can he can kind of flow with it. Okay. So um, it's not difficult. My style. I don't do that. I, 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 I did grind. Now I, I, uh, when I have, when I, it's like, I'll get into that. I'll get into that groove. I, I don't have a ritual right now. I don't. Okay. And that's okay. a problem. See, I know I'm, it's part of being a man, by the way. So, so how would <laughs> you have to own it? You got to own it. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Now, how would you structure your day for success? Like, what would you recommend to somebody? Uh, wake up as early as possible. Okay. What time? What time are you waking up? I always wake. I always wake up at five, five thirty. Five a.m. Yeah, yeah. Beat the sun up. Uncle G. Yeah, <laughs> you gotta beat the sun up, man. You have to beat the sun up. Yeah. So and and I treat my day with me in mind first. Okay. Get a good meal. Get a good headspace. Work out. Okay. Just part time. Full time. From my perspective, this is not and cannot be a, to be successful. You cannot do this part time. Now, that's not to say that when it's your part time job and you have another job as well that's actually paying the bills when you're not out there selling a results based business, <laughs> it's going to take up all of your time. Mm hmm. And you're only limited again to the your your bank account will dictate just exactly how hard you work that year. It's not gonna lie to you. It will not lie to you. The numbers will not lie to you. If it's down here, your efforts were down there. 
So we're, you and I are in the same mindset of like, this is not part time. This is the job. This is the, the career. This is the path to financial freedom. This is the path to freedom. Forget the money. Money's cars. Change them out like, like a pair of diapers. You know, it doesn't matter. It, it's, it doesn't matter. What's the purpose? What's your, what's your mission? What's your, what's your, why are you doing it? What's, what is it? What is it? What is it that's going to drive you? And I guarantee it's not going to be the money. Most people will get into it part time because they're, they're sick. They're sick of it. They're sick of the race. They're sick of all this, you know, it's, um, and you gotta really be watch, be mindful of who you hire, <laughs> who you fire, who you you know because these people a lot of a lot of people out there they 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 they're gonna jump all over you like you're the savior, like your your team structure is gonna save them. You're gonna give them all the leads and they're gonna do nothing and they're just gonna sit back and get that eighty five seven thousand dollar check. Yeah. They're just gonna sit back. It's gonna come to them part time. Easy money. Be very mindful of the, the broker that you choose that that's makes statements like that. That makes sense. Or the team member that says statements like that. And because um, I'm I'm of the mindset, and my my clients are of the mindset. They they're using my services because I'm 100% transparent, and I set an expectation that's realistic. And my core value is authenticity. I'd be lying to you. If if I said this is a part-time job, it's not. So do you feel that you had to uh, experience failure to learn and grow in this business? Did I, do I feel, I always got to repeat this yeah, question. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. So, so do you feel like you had to experience failures in order to actually grow? Like, do you feel like you could be at where you're at today if you never had to go through that barrier of failure? The, it's a it's a it's a Chinese proverb or something. Experience, <laughs> experience is the greatest teacher. Yeah. So I know personally through my most recent um, challenge, personal challenges, has nothing to do with the business, but it does in a way because you are the business. Mm -hmm. Your brand is the business. Your personality is the business. The way you conduct yourself publicly is the business and per and, per and personally. So those, those challenges, I'm of the mindset that a man can only truly learn from those hard, hard lessons. Like, yeah. that's the only way I learn, is I when agree. you lose it all. You gotta lose it all. I agree. And, and you have to, like I said earlier in, in, in previous uh, interviews, you have to hit the bottom you have to hit the bottom the people out there watching your show people out there listening to your stuff and following your progress and your success and watching you rise up it's inspiring to them and they're catching you when they're not necessarily where they should be they may be there at the bottom or maybe they're in their parents basement get out of the basement get out of the basement hit bottom then you're gonna be uh, a lot it's going to be so much more rewarding and again the risk and the reward have to equate you're not going to get it for nothing so that's that's what's that's the the failure is 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 key failure is key i agree with that yeah you have to so don uh, do you have any last words of advice or inspiration that you want to give out to the audience before we wrap this thing up? Yeah, um, I do. Be you. Be you. Be true to yourself. Um, take it all in. Take what he says. Take what I'm saying. Take what uh, some of the greats, the bigs out there that are, are doing. But also know that you're seeing a highlight reel of somebody for the most part. So don't get lost in it and just go at your own pace, but know that you're going to go at a pace that's going to hurt. It's going to hurt to be on your edge. It hurts.
To be successful, it hurts. To be, you gotta, you gotta keep moving forward, and it's, it has to. Uh, you have to go through those challenges to, to make something happen. And the only way you're gonna be truly satisfied is if you do it and you can say, I did that. Not the guy I was trying to be, but me, the person that I, I, I am. So Don, thanks, thanks for coming on the show. Thanks for having me at your hey, office. Absolutely. I really appreciate it. Uh, any questions you have for Don, reach out to him. I'll drop his uh, information to his social media below. Uh, he's a good resource, so any questions you have, Definitely reach out. Absolutely. And uh, thanks for tuning in. And I, I want to just say one more thing. Yes. I hope one of the questions are going to say, what's in the red cup? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely ask. Yeah, yeah, ask what's in the red cup. <laughs> I will respond and tell you. <laughs> Have a good night. Thanks so much.